Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want to share with you how a lot of times we try to put out fires. Fires here, fires there, fires everywhere. Fires, fires, fires. Where's the water hose? Where's the sand? Where's the fire extinguisher? Where did I put it? Oh my goodness, I got to put out these fires. Do you know there are times when God is sitting there with his arms crossed? When are you going to call on me? I've got your answer. I am your answer. And you're spinning your wheels, chasing your tail, getting nowhere. And I'm sitting here with everything you need. Why is it I'm the last one you think to call on? After you've tried your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your, your, your lawyer, your whoever. Why am I the last that you think to run to? It's almost like when all else is spent and there's nowhere else to go. Oh, last resort. Can't do anything about it. I guess I'll talk to God about it. We do that all the time. One time, my father was in a facility, a rehab, for a very short period of time after coming out of the hospital. Now, I was already very dissatisfied with the way they took care of him in the hospital. So I wanted him to hurry up and come home so I could give him the tender loving care I knew I could give. I had nurse's aid experience. I had the, the nurse's aid certificate. I had the training. I knew what to do with my pops. Well, they had him in this facility and gave us a call. They were going to send him home, but they couldn't wake him up. So they sent him back to the hospital. Oh, I was hot. Girlfriend right here. Oh, yeah, I was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that would have mighty been a fire, but I was hot. I was ready to get up into somebody's butt behind my pops. So, I'm standing there fussing. But, guess who I was fussing to? I was fussing to the Lord. I was angry. I said, I'll go down there and I'll, I'll catch a cab if I have to, but I'm going to get my father out of that mess. There is no way they're going to keep him up in there and mess him up any further. That's a bunch of crap. I'm going to get him out of there. I don't care what they say. If I got to stick him in a wheelchair and run him out, they're not going to mess him up. In oh, I was having a hissy fit. So while I'm fussing now, because I am, at least talking to the Lord about it. But I'm fussing. The radio was on. It was a Christian station. <laughs> That's why it pays to keep Christian music playing. God can use a lot of that in moments of panic. Yeah, that's my cell phone. Ignore it. Well, what ended up happening was I sat there and I said, you know what? I'm going to go down there. I'm going to go down right now. And what the Lord did was literally turn up the volume of a song. Just like that came on, the song came on. And the song was this. We must wait, wait. Wait on the Lord. And I'm thinking, I don't want to wait. I got to go down there and get in some butt. I got to get my, my father back home. They're not going to mess over him. We must wait, wait, wait on the Lord. We must learn our lessons well. In his timing, he will tell us what to do, where to go, what to say. I'm like, shoo, I can go down there, I'll cuss him out. I'm saved, right? About three months old in the Lord, but I was ready, Freddie. I was ready to put out these fires, you guys. I'm so serious. And when that song got through, wait on the Lord. And I'm like, wait on the Lord? What's the Lord going to do? But as the song played, 
Do you know all that anger, all that wrath, all that clamor in my heart, in my mind? It's like he just doused the flames. The anger was gone. The panic was gone. The frustration was gone. And I said, how did you do that? I'm just as calm as if everything was hunky-dory. I couldn't believe it. And guess what? He woke up in the hospital. When he woke up in the hospital, they told me in two days they were going to send him home. Just in time for Thanksgiving, which was my prayer. Let him get home by Thanksgiving, because if the holidays go by, he's going to really go into a depression. They mean a lot to him. He needs to be home. He was home. Two days, he was confused because he was out of his mind in the hospital and in the facility. The very next morning he woke up, he was in his right mind. So I say that to tell you, and then I took care of him until he, he passed away eight months later. And the Lord blessed us with the most beautiful Christmas. We sang and harmonized together. We just had a beautiful time. You know how you decorate the lights outside? I had all of it inside, all over the piano, all over the TV, all over the windows. I had lights everywhere. He helped me decorate the tree. Where do you want this bowl? Where do you want that bowl? Tell me where to put this. We had a ball. But I tell you this, I could have made a mess of things. Going down there, showing my behind, acting and talking a fool. But no, God calmed me down with a song on the radio. And by the power of his Holy Spirit, he totally deflated my anger and the heat of passion. So cool, chilled out. I was mellow as a cello. Go figure. So whatever fires you're trying to put out, whatever you're trying to contain and maintain and, 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 and get together and, and line up and organize and set it, all the, doc, all the ducks in a row and trying to get the water hose and the fire hydrant and, and, the, and the fire extinguisher and you're going to put out these, you're going to handle this. Kick it, slow down, slow your roll, talk to God about it and then ask him to quiet your spirit and tell you what to do as you wait on the Lord.